go ahead and take an actual look at a print we did with the half tones from our Simple Seps plugin. You would see that we're holding a lot of detail. In fact, I'd go ahead and say that this is a high end design. You can see the detail in this print. Incredible fashion design. Here we have our black film printing out. Everything auto separated in Simple Seps, half tones generated automatically, then printed right out to your black film on an inkjet. Here we are washing the screen out, able to hold all those dots on a 230 mesh screen. Here we are setting up the t-shirt and going ahead and printing. You'll see that we're holding all of our dots. Very high quality, high detail, half tone printing without a $500 or $1,000 rip. And right now, Simple Seps comes with the Mega Pack 1 from t-shirtcliparc.com. That's over 500 hand-drawn monochrome design elements. You can go ahead and start creating and separating with half tones, high-end designs that have the type of look you see on the retail stores and on the shelves today that the kids go crazy over in the high schools. Very easily and very simply with the art and the Simple Steps plugin. Blow your clients away before your competition does with the Simple Steps plugin and the monochrome art. If you wanted to work with it that way, you could, or you could right-click on this and select Order to Back to Page, or you could come up here in your Properties bar, just click, and that'll automatically send the skull all the way to the back of the page. I'm going to go ahead and select all the text, and what we're shooting here for is kind of like a crown position of the text on top of the skull, and then we can build our flourish and additional skulls on top of that. So we'll bring this here, and we'll go ahead and rotate this just a bit more. Left-click, hold down, as you can see there, and I want to bring this up here just a skosh. And I'd say that's about it right there for my skull setup. Now for my other three skulls that we had at the top of the design, I'll just go ahead and left click this one time, duplicate, bring this up to the top here. Go ahead and change the size of this. And then what I want to do is rotate this to kind of fit what's going on with the text here. As you can see right there, kind of like it's part of what's happening or on top of the text is part of like a crown, I guess you might say. Now what I'll do with this, I'll right click and go order and I'll select in front of and Corel's going to process the save again. And once again, we've got some rather big files open here, but select in front of and actually I'll go to my skull here and see if that's going to show down through my skull. And I don't want that there, so I'm going to right click and I can go down here, order to back of page, or I can click up here and that'll send that to the back of the page for me. And I'll go ahead and rotate this just a little bit. And even though these are, you know, raster graphics, we can still tweak them and adjust them. I want to just twist this down just a little bit there and tweak it just a bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this again over here to one side, and we'll go ahead and resize this, change the size just a bit, as we can see here. And then I'm going to go ahead and right-click and order to back of page right there. Now we've got our two skulls here, and then I'm going to go ahead and get another skull over here, but this one I'll mirror, and that's why I had everything grouped so I could work with it. We'll mirror this, and then we'll rotate it going the other way. Here. So we've come off this one skull, but we're creating a really intense design pretty easily and pretty quickly dealing with these monochrome objects as opposed to vector order and to back of page. Now I really like to work off my context sensitive left mouse menus here a lot. You might want to work with the properties bar, but I just prefer to work that way. I'm going to change the size of this skull just a little bit, make it a little bit smaller so we'll have some more room for the other skull here, right here. And then we can go ahead and rotate this and tilt it so it's right coming off the top, kind of like the teeth are following what's going on with the text. Go ahead and hold down my shift key and I'm going to select all three of these, click, resize them and reposition them a little bit. Just looking for balance here coming off of the top of the skull here and the bottom in my design. So these are good. I like these the way these are set right now. I'm going to go ahead and take my flourish element here, bring this down here to one side, left click, rotate, and I'll bring that out and we'll bring this up. Now we've got a full set of tutorials on advanced t-shirts.com the fashion factory will show you a lot about working with these monochrome objects. 
order and we'll go to back of page and there's our one flourish set up here on the bottom then we'll go ahead and duplicate that up here at the top of the skull and I'll go ahead and mirror that and I'll rotate that to fit in right here and then I'll just take this right click order and I'll go to back of page so I've got my flourishes and skull set up here pretty quickly and what I want to do next is go ahead and resize all of this bring it down so it fits in what's going to be my film when I output that which is right about there and what I want to do next is I want to bring my flame effect in and I'm actually going to use my fashion factory for that and I want to put a background on this so I can see what my garments going to look like I know I'm going to be going on colored garments so I'm going to get a background on this give this a dark gray color no outline and I'll actually go ahead and lock that right click and select lock object so that that's locked now I won't have to select that when I'm dealing with my graphics here now so for my flame we're going to use a couple of different things here I'm going to go into my textures and I'm going to come into actually I want to go up here in my S's and we'll go with take a look at shard and I want to go through here and find my uh, here we go Crete flame and this I'm going to import as a file as opposed to going ahead and applying as a transparency we got some good ammunition for creating textures and effects directly here in draw actually I'll click this here and that will bring that in for me now I want to right click here I think that went to the back of my page I'll go to view and wireframe and let's see where that went and it might have been um, coming in because I had that selected and I want to go import effect and we'll see where that goes and ah, okay actually what happened is it came in I just couldn't see it it's right here it went to the back of my page when I brought it in so if you bring a texture and you can't see it what's happening is it's going to the back of your page sometimes when you do these imports because there's so many different layers and so many different objects sometimes you have an issue with where your file goes but I'll go back to view and enhanced and you'll see here's my Crete flames and these come in as monochrome bitmaps high resolution I'll bring this over here you can see that did go to the back of my page. So I want to right click on that, go to order and select in front of, click on my gray here. And now I've got this whole black flame effect here. But I want to set this up as a white to offset on my colored garment. So come over here to my um, tinted palette that I set to start with my design. And I'll right click here on Pantone Trans White 100%. And there's my flames. Now, looking at this particular object, the way that it came in to draw, I'll go ahead and rotate this and you can see that would be a nice flame effect but I really want to tweak this just a bit so it kind of has more of a flamey shape coming up into a point like it's coming off of the skull more naturally so what I'm going to do to do this I'm going to right click and turn that flame crete graphic or texture that we brought in back to a black and I'm going to go to bitmap convert to bitmap I'm going to select grayscale 300 dpi I want transparent background turned on. The reason is because if I don't have transparent background turned on, I go make adjustments in photo paint, then bring that back into draw. I'm not going to be able to easily convert that back to a monochrome unless I want to go back and convert it manually with my fashion factory. But I'm going to select OK. We want to make sure we have that transparent background. Next time to go is bitmap, and I'm going to select edit bitmap, and I'm going to open this up in photo paint, and I'm going to tweak it with some distortion to make the shape of that flame follow what's going on with this design and this skull. Now once that's opened up in photo paint, I'll go ahead and bring this here so everybody can see what I'm working on. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and we're going to take a look at this and you can see nice textures and stuff here but what I want to do is take this and make some adjustments to it. So I'm going to go to effects, I'm going to go to distort and I'm going to select mesh warp. And then I'm going to go ahead and increase my grid here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start pulling some of these nodes here over to change the shape of my flames here so that they'll look more like something that's flowing off of that actual skull and have a little bit of a different shape associated with them. You can see I'm going to have this swooping off the skull instead of just going straight up. And we'll bring this down here in a bit and bring this down here in a bit. And you can see how working with this distortion tool we can make radical changes to our raster graphics 